Oh boy, those are a nuisance. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. And a warm welcome to all of you joining us for worship morning in Molesworth. I'm hunting around for my announcements at the minute, which amidst all the bits and pieces of paper seem to have evaded me. Uh, so let's hope that I can remember everything that needs to be announced uh, at the start of the service. Welcome to everyone who uh, joins us both here in the meeting house, who joins us online as well uh, on our YouTube channel. And of course, we hope also those who are listening across in the hall at Family Zone. Uh, I know there's been some technical glitches just with that link this morning, and I, I trust and beat this by this stage that's sorted and you can hear me. Um, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, I've lost the, everything I needed for the, the announcements, let me. Anyway, welcome also to our visiting speaker this morning. This is PW service today, our annual PW service. A little bit different maybe than usual, again, because of the restrictions and everything that's been upon us for the past year. PW, of course, have not been meeting, but they will be meeting again soon uh, in the new program for the autumn and winter time uh, of the, the, the year. But uh, welcome to Trevor Morrow, uh, someone many of us will know uh, from our neighbouring uh, congregation in Cookstown Baptist. Trevor, you're very, very welcome. But today I know you come in your capacity as a representative of One Mission. And uh, many of us I know have followed the work of OMS, as it used to be, maybe better known over the years. And uh, a number of the folks indeed who have served with that mission. But Trevor, we're delighted to have you here to speak uh, to us on this uh, PW Sunday because very much at the heart of the work of Presbyterian women is the, the work of mission at home and overseas. So we're, we're thankful for your presence here with us today. We meet again tonight at half past six uh, in our evening service. We, As you know, we're kind of phasing in our evening service times uh, because we've, we've not had them, of course, for a while. So we're meeting again tonight, not next Sunday night. Next Sunday night, we're back for, for on Zoom for our Sunday night prayer meeting at half past six instead, but tonight we're meeting in the church hall. Again, an opportunity maybe for some, maybe some who are watching who are a little bit hesitant about coming back into the the, the bigger gathering of the morning service, uh, that smaller gathering in the church hall on Sunday evenings, an opportunity for you to join us tonight at half past six. The other thing to say just on this PW Sunday is that uh, to remind you that there's a little envelope in your bundle of free will offering envelopes. It's a kind of multi-purpose envelope for two or three things, but one of the things you can contribute to is the PW's mission outreach. And uh, if you haven't done that already this year, you can be reminded by today's service, you might want to return that envelope, put a gift in it, and just put a tick beside where it says PW, and that will be very gratefully received and given to the, the, the PW's mission outreach work. Uh, other things that are just happening in the incoming week. Uh, tomorrow, uh, no, no, sorry, going to Wednesday evening uh, of this week, uh, we have our meeting for Bible study and prayer, just a short time of Bible study and then a time of prayer, gathering in person in the church hall at eight o'clock. And please do try to make an opportunity to, to come out to that again. We're, again, this is an area of our work we're trying to build up again from where it has been uh, in the past We've had just prayer meetings over the summer. We're, we're getting back to the Bible study time as well now. Uh, on Friday uh, or evening of this week, then, the Revive group, the newly formed group formed by some of the younger women in our church, are holding their walk and talk event. That's at 7 o'clock, meeting up at the church car park at 7 o'clock. It's open to all the women, both the church and beyond, so please invite friends along to that. Uh, you meet in the church car park at seven, off for a walk, and then some smoothies to follow afterwards at the church hall. So that's something to look forward to then. Um, what other things have I to, to mention this morning? <laughs> really, this is where I'm losing my announcement sheet is really evading me. I have a couple of them here anyway that I do recall. Friday also is the uh, meeting of, the first meeting for a while of the Cookstown High School Parents and Friends prayer meeting. That got completely you know, abandoned last year when there was great restrictions on who could enter the school premises. We're hoping to get that going again this Friday uh, at between half past one and two o'clock. We meet up in Coolin and Frankie House in the high, high school grounds, just go in the front door, upstairs, and probably in the boardroom of the of the of the upstairs, one of the upstairs rooms there, you'll find the, the, the gathering for prayer. Great opportunity to pray for our school community, for the staff, for the work of the Christian Union in school, uh, for the work of uh, Christian 
young people witnessing among their friends in the school community. It's, it's been very much valued in our, our principal in the high school. Ms. Evans has very much encouraged us to, to continue this work. So we've got some little printed cards that are by the exits as you leave today uh, on the on beside the offering boxes, just to remind you of the upcoming dates throughout the, the rest of the, the year. Uh, that we meet once a month for that time of prayer, and we'd love to have you along and part of that. Another way which we're wanting to get involved with the school community uh, in the coming month or so uh, is that the high school Christian Union have this year taken on board uh, one of those Christmas shoebox appeals that seeks to provide gifts uh, for people in disadvantaged situations in other parts of the world, and particularly uh, the work of Blythewood, Blythewood Care uh, have a, a ministry into Eastern Europe, and they're asking local congregations to help them, at least the school uh, scripture union are asking local congregations to help them as they gather shoeboxes full of gifts for giving out uh, to people in Eastern Europe at Christmas time. We will have some of these leaflets available, hopefully shortly. I've just got one of them at the minute. But there, if you go to, to shoeboxappeal.org, you can read about it already. We'll be putting more details about this in a little bulletin. We're sending out for harvest time as well, so you can read about it there. But we're hoping to have those gifts gathered in by Sunday the 24th of October. Uh, this is just on the first initial mention of it now, and that means it won't interfere with what we normally do nearer Christmas time when we support the work of Prison Fellowship and the work of Belfast City Mission. That will happen as usual, but we're just trying this year especially to help also the, the Scripture Union and school with their, uh, their project as well. I'm thinking that's maybe all the announcements, but I couldn't really be sure if I think of any more in the course of the service, I'll, I'll bring them to you. Uh, but... Uh, for now, we're going to worship the Lord. As we do that, we turn to the words of Psalm 99, where it says, The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion. He is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob, you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Let's do that now as we sing God's praise in this, these well-known words. In Christ alone, my hope is found. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my soul his scorn is stone his solid ground burn through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand in christ alone who took on flesh fullness of god in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I lay. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the part of Christ in me, from life 
Christ's words fly to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No part of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Now, during that, we've managed to get two reminders of the stuff I forgot to say. Firstly, very simply, we've been singing. You've got to keep your face covering on as you sing. But for, as of, well, actually Wednesday passed, in church, we're free to remove these. When we're not singing, you don't have to, but you may. Uh, and uh, you can certainly do that if it's more comfortable in the rest of the service. You have to also wear it entering and leaving church. So that's the, the kind of uh, way we are at the minute. But it's a, a significant help to be able to be without them uh, as you sit and listen. The other thing I think, I think, Lawrence, you were going to remind us to, is to the, the committee meeting. We had a meeting of congregational committee now planned, and that will be Thursday, the 7th of October at 7.30 p.m. In the, in the church hall. So that's committee members, get that date in your diary. Let's join together at God's throne of grace in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come as your people have done in, in generations past and will do until you return again as a people thankful and glad every time we worship. Glad for your grace and mercy that enables us to come as people who have a new heart to love you. In the, heart, in the hearts of so many people in our midst this morning, you have done an amazing work of grace. Bring us out of spiritual darkness into the light and love of Jesus Christ, releasing us, Lord, from the burden and the curse of our sin because of what all that Christ has done for us when he died upon the cross. And truly, we can. those of us who are redeemed in Jesus can say today, in Christ alone, my hope is found. We would have found no hope within ourselves and within the, the foolishness and the, the wickedness of our own hearts that would always have chosen our will against God's will. But because of the amazing saving grace of Christ, we who know him today can truly say, oh, what heights of love and depths of peace have entered into our lives. And to know that every sin of ours, in all its ugliness, in all its, its horror, uh, every sin that offended a holy God has been laid at Calvary upon our all-sufficient savory Jesus Christ. And he has bought us at amazing cost our freedom from condemnation and our promise of peace with God and of life everlasting. And we pray that we will be glad always in that. And even that in itself will be a rebuke every time to us every time the devil comes to tempt us to lead us to return to old sins, to revisit the willfulness of our hearts that rejected God. But instead, Lord, may we be convicted by your spirit day and daily. And when we find, in every area where we find we have sinned, may we be quick to confess and to apply again to the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And to know that we who stand in Christ, stand in his risen power. We have not simply our own willpower to live this new life you've given us, but the power of the risen Lord. May we therefore, not only on this day of worship where we gather here, but in the rest of the week ahead, step forth in faith as a people of God who would desire to represent Christ in our community, to witness for him, to share his good news, to demonstrate by the holiness of our lives that he has done something wonderful for us. Grant your help in that, we pray. And grant to us, Lord, in this time of worship this morning, a real sense of your presence, of the Spirit of God speaking to our hearts from the Word of God. And through your servant who has come amongst us today, we thank you for Trevor and all the, the, the witness that he and his wife Christine have borne over the years in, in the work of, of gospel mission here and overseas. And we thank you for the, the ministry you've given them right now uh, as they wor work along with one mission in sharing the opportunity for mission across the world and in supporting those who are engaged in world mission and encouraging others to go and to give. And we pray, Lord God, and that you will uh, use Trevor's ministry among us today to make us much more a people 
who, who are ready in those respects to be a people who go out in Jesus' name telling the good news, a people who give in faith to the work of gospel mission, a people who pray with passion for the work of your kingdom. So bless our brother, we pray, and use his ministry among us in a wonderful way today, we pray. Grant these things, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, we have two Bible readings in our service today, both of which have been recorded by members of the, the PW. Uh, the first of those is going to be actually from 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, and uh, that will come from verses 3 to 13 of that chapter, uh, will be read to us by Carl Ferguson. So if you want to turn to that in your Bibles, you can do that. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning to read at verse 3. The reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 3 to 13. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, Prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Amen. Indeed, we know God will bless the reading of his word and we thank you, Carl, for recording that reading for us. We're going to sing once more uh, this hymn that reminds us that the Lord is my salvation. The grace of God has reached for me and pull me from the raging sea. And after we've sung this hymn, we'll allow the folks in Family Zone uh, to go to their own program as we continue the rest of the service here in church. The grace of God is reached for me. And pull me from the raging sea, and I am safe on the solid ground. The Lord is my salvation. I will not fear when darkness falls. His strength will help me scale these walls. I'll see the dawn of the rising sun, the Lord is my salvation. Who is like the Lord our God, strong to save faithful in love? My dead is made and the is my salvation. My hope is hidden in the Lord. 
keep God's each promise of His word. When winter fades, I know spring will come. The Lord is my salvation. In times of waiting, times of need, when I know lost, when I am weak, I know His grace will renew these days. The Lord is my salvation. Who is like the Lord our God, strong to save, faithful in love? My dead is great and the victory won, the Lord is my salvation. And when I reach my final day, he will not leave me in the grave, but I will rise, He will call me home, the Lord is my salvation, who is like the Lord our God, strong to save faithful in love, my death. is my salvation. Glory be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Son. Glory be to God the Spirit. The Lord is our salvation. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, the Lord is our salvation, the Lord is our salvation. Now, if you turn again in your Bible, please, uh, to Psalm 33. Uh, we're not able to put the, the words up because we're playing these from recordings and so many video recordings. We can't put the words up at the same time as we normally do. So Psalm 33, uh, verses 1 to 22 and that's going to be read by Georgie Alexander. Psalm 33, verse 1 to 22. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise, for the word of the Lord is right and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth at their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. 
a mighty man is not delivered by much strength. An horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Here endeth the reading. Again, thank you, Georgie. And we know that God will bless once more the reading of his infallible word. Before I hand over to Trevor, we're going to pray again. And at this, this point, we're going to be remembering the work of, of PW, uh, also some of the mission interests that they have and the projects that they're supporting at the current time, and as well as then remembering, of course, the, the needs of our own congregation uh, in these days. So let's again come to God's throne in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you indeed for your mercies and your kindness to us that are new and fresh every morning for your faithfulness that is great and sustains us and provides for all the needs of your people and for all the, the work of the gospel here and right across the world. And we recognize, Lord, the great challenges that have faced gospel ministry and mission over these recent months of pandemic and indeed that can st still in so many places restrict uh, the outreach of, of, of the gospel. And yet none of this is unknown to you nor beyond your sovereign purpose in all of this. And we're, we're mindful, Lord, of, of, of how much you've helped us and provided for us and enabled us, uh, despite the difficulties, to continue uh, to minister God's word into people's lives and into their hearts. And we thank you for the work and witness of Presbyterian women. Uh, we know that the last year has, has prevented that work happening in this congregation. But as we look now to a new season and we look forward in faith to the possibilities that are before us, to the meetings where the women will gather month by month. And we just pray for faith, uh, for folks to come and be part of those meetings and uh, for a, a new heart for the, the work in this new season. We pray that those meetings will prove to be a source of great encouragement and challenge and help to all who, who to attend. And that the PW's witness in this congregation will be blessed greatly by you. We remember too, indeed, alongside it, the, the work of the younger women have also started the work of Revive and pray that even that ministry that they contemplate in, on Friday night in the coming months will know your blessing and your help and your almighty power upon it. We think too of the, the work of, of gospel outreach that PW regularly support. We think of the the Presbyterian deaconesses who are working uh, in the lives of congregations in pastoral care and in other areas of, of developing congregational life and witness. We remember those engaged in the work of chaplaincy in the hospitals and those in, involved in community, out, community outreach in projects like South Belfast Friendship House. We praise you and thank you for the many opportunities to share Christ with people who are spiritually lost and need a saviour. And we pray that that witness will be owned and blessed by you in these days to come. We remember too the work of global mission within our denomination that PW support. And we uh, think of the many global mission workers who are in different parts of the world and those indeed who are longing to return to work. We think very especially of Gary and Mary Reed, whose work we're familiar with here and uh, who have for many months now been waiting to go back to Africa, back to the work amongst the Maasai of Kenya. And we pray that the doors of opportunity will soon open for them once again to re-engage that work that has been so powerfully blessed by you in recent years. And Lord, the work that continues there, even in their absence, week by week, would see people converted, people coming to know Christ in a real and living and personal way. Remember, too, the, the church planting work that James and Heather Cochran are engaged in, in in Porto and Portugal. And thank you for the, the opportunities there that have enabled people who've never heard the, the good news of Jesus to be challenged and we believe in the power of your spirit, some to be, have been converted and we pray for that. We think of the projects that PW have set aside to support financially in the coming uh, year. And indeed in the year past, remember the work of CARE Northern Ireland as they seek to, in, in the public square, hold up the, the banner of gospel, truth and light 
uh, and working amongst the among the, the politicians who govern our country and uh, amongst the, the areas of, of, of public life and service where we want to bring a Christian witness and uh, to bear uh, and a Christian morality to be defended. We think too of their project uh, that reaches out to Nepal and the work of, of, of Ochal Dundaga Community Hospital in that uh, Asian nation. We thank you for the the way that gospel work has been enabled in recent times to fight many challenges in that part of the world. And we pray that work will be blessed by you. Lord, we also just remember now our, our own congregation's life and, and witness as we seek week by week to reestablish areas of, of, of gospel work. We remember the family zone, her meeting across the way, and pray that very soon that work will be replaced by the return of Sunday school and children's church. And we remember our boys' brigade and girls' brigade companies who are making plans for the future. But Look, just look yet to see those plans become a reality. Lord, will you open up the, the way for that in the, in the weeks ahead? And we pray, therefore, that the levels of infection that are in our community would reduce significantly, uh, especially amongst children and young people, and that you would enable that work to have a, a fresh impetus in the, in the months ahead. We remember, too, the needs of others in our congregation at the present time who've been in hospital in recent days, who are currently grappling with sickness uh, and, and maybe disability at home. And remember those who will go to the workplace tomorrow and find many challenges there in their workaday life. Lord, you know the needs that every one of us carries in our hearts. And we, we know that as we spread that need before you, you're the God who is sufficient for all these things. Even when we feel very weak and insufficient, you're the God who will supply all of our need. And so, Lord God, we, we, we lay our need and our, our weakness before you and trust in your almighty power. We pray again just once now that you will, once more that you will bless our brother Trevor as he ministers to us uh, in these moments ahead, and he will know the power and the anointing of God resting upon his ministry. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trevor, do you feel free to come and join us? You're most welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to be with you. I want to thank Tom for his very warm welcome and indeed all of the ladies for their invitation to come and share in this special service uh, today. Now it's going to be a little bit different and I trust that you've all got your trainers on because we're going to be going at a little bit of a fast pace as we uh, consider a little report on, on the work of One Mission Society as well as uh, looking at God's Word. Now just by way of introduction, uh, I came to Cookstown for the very first time back in 1982, I came to work here, and I not only worked here, but I fell in love here. And uh, Christine and I uh, were married, and then later went to serve the Lord with Baptist missions in the land of Peru. We've just completed 26 years there, uh, three, four years ago, and um, just now I'm with uh, One Mission Society coming up, serving almost three years. So it's a particular joy to come and to represent one Mission Society. A little bit ironic, really, because I am here in the Presbyterian Church this morning, and my executive director is in Castlereagh Baptist this morning. So I'm not quite sure who's trying to convert who today, but it's, it's good to be with you. And uh, I trust that God will bless us as we look at his word together and as we think about his work around the world. I also pray that you're managing to find this morning real joy and hope in the blessings of God that we can still enjoy at this extremely challenging time in our world. Whatever the difficulties, trials, or sufferings, even if the situation appears absolutely hopeless, there is hope against all odds when our hope is in God. We read in God's words in Hebrews chapter 10 that let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So just for today, we're going to imagine that all government restrictions on travel have been lifted, and we're going to visit a number of countries where OMS are currently serving. But first of all, let me begin with a short report from Micah and uh, Maria Routen, who are serving in Brazil, where at one point there were over 4,000 deaths as a result of COVID. Since the beginning of last year, the church are helping to plant has doubled. We switched our discipleship classes and small group meetings to an online format, and the response was absolutely tremendous. 
we saw that not only people's faith being challenged to go deeper, but the number of people being attracted to Jesus is also growing. So through, though the pandemic has presented very definite challenges, they say, it has been wonderful to see how God is still bringing people to himself. Can you and I still worship God through all of the challenges that we face each day? Have we really got anything for which to thank and praise him? Is there hope for brighter days ahead for you and for me, for our families, for our country, indeed for our world? Among the many mixed messages we hear today, is there hope in the message of the gospel? So can I ask you to keep your Bibles open at that psalm that was read for us, Psalm 33. And what I'm going to do is bring uh, some thoughts from that psalm, as well as bringing some insights into the work. Now, the psalmist begins this wonderful psalm with a call to worship. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord. Make, make melody to him. Sing to him a new song with loud shouts. The psalmist here is encouraging, enthusiastic, and indeed joyful praise, even in our difficulties. He goes on in the psalm to explain why we should be a people who continually praise our God for who he is, for what he's done, and indeed for what he is continuing to do in our world today. This is the greatest message of hope against all odds that the world still needs to hear today. And maybe, just maybe this is the message that you need to hear today. One of the main themes for One Mission Society, indeed its logo as it were, is engaging the one to reach the many. Charles Cowan, one Mission Society's co-founder stressed, way back in 1901, the best way to reach a nation for Christ is to train the sons and daughters of that nation to reach their own. This continues to be the foundational uh, motive of OMS around the world today. We reach one who can be equipped to reach many others. God's work expands. When we disciple one who can then be formed into a disciple maker, the transforming work of the gospel is multiplied. When a Christ-adoring church is prepared to plant other churches, the multiplication accelerates. And when a disciple-making leader invests in training other leaders, ministry deepens and matures. And when the mission field becomes a mission force, God's glory is glorified in the nations. And so in One Mission Society, our one focus is this. We believe that the power of the gospel in the hands of disciple-makers will transform all nations. And so I would like to share this morning just some of the ways God is at work through One Mission Society. So keep your Bibles, as I say, open at Psalm 33, and we will remind ourselves in these uncertain times that we are surrounded by God's amazing love and that we will understand why we can confidently put our hope in God, even when the odds appear to be stacked against us. So first of all, there is nothing too hard for our God to do. There is nothing our God cannot do for us. And the psalmist reminds us of this in verse 6. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He, he, he breathed and all the stars were born. He assigned the sea its boundaries and locked the oceans in vast reservoirs. God, our God, is omnipotent, all-powerful. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, our God cannot do. We can believe it. We can depend on it. We can trust it. We can hope in it. We can feed on this. We can be guided by it. We can be transformed by it day by day. We read here in this great psalm that God spoke and the world was created. God spoke, the world began, and what our God created, the Bible tells us, was good, was very good. Now, John Calvin, in his commentary on this, points out that the psalmist brings before us God's creation of the world, because until we believe that he created all that is, we won't believe that the world is controlled by his wisdom and by his power. Our God is a powerful God. His word is powerful, and God always keeps his promises. No problem he cannot solve. No need our God cannot meet. No disease our God cannot heal. No storm in life he cannot calm. No miracle he cannot perform. No person he cannot save. And here the psalmist reminds us, no nation he cannot 
transformed. There is hope against all odds through the powerful message of the gospel. And so in God's mission, let me just share with you some statistics um, with you this morning. OMS, One Mission Society, is working in partnership with over 200 organizations or denominations around the world. We're working alongside some 30,000 indigenous co-workers with over 500 missionaries currently worldwide, working in over 50 different languages. And listen, planting over 6,000 churches each year. Two more amazing statistics. And I'm sure the Presbyterians know the word amen. I get excited when I think of this. There are more than 3 million people hearing the gospel every month through the efforts of One Mission Society. Okay, I didn't get an amen there, but let's see about this one. There is a new believer on average every 31 seconds through the efforts of OMS and its partners. Amen. Thank you. But the work is challenging. And when we look at countries like Belgium, or we look at countries like Ireland, two of the countries in Europe with less than 1% of the population being evangelical. But God is raising up new missionaries, even Presbyterians. And let me introduce you to John and Joe Montgomery. John and Joe Montgomery have served the Presbyterian Church for many, many years and will continue to be supported by the Presbyterian Church under the umbrella of One Mission Society. And God willing, John and Joe with their family will move to the south of Ireland and be involved in that great work um, that God is doing down there. Please pray for John and Joe and their family as they raise their support and plan to move to the south of Ireland next year. So we've been to Belgium, Brazil, Republic of Ireland. Let's go to Mozambique. We've been hearing in recent months of the ruby and oil-rich province of Cabo Delgado in the north of Mozambique. And this has been the epicenter, indeed, of harrowing violence. While oil and mining companies move in, so too have Islamic insurgents. And it is estimated that over half a million people are now displaced, representing over 20% of the population. But this is where we have the Kelly, Kelly family, albeit there in the south of Mozambique. And they're involved in sharing hope in hopeless situations, making disciples, nurturing churches, and impacting lives as well as bringing practical help and real hope to disabled people through the Helping Hands Project. God is at work too in the land of Haiti. Haiti has been on our news, an incredibly uh, strong earthquake there in recent weeks. But OMS have two ministries there, two main ministries. One is a radio ministry, and we are thrilled. They celebrated their 70th anniversary not too long ago. And it is reported here in Haiti that there are over 160,000 people currently living with HIV. And one listener with HIV sent in this message to the radio station. Thanks for VEH. This video allowed me to renew my faith and belief in Jesus Christ. I hope you continue to teach many hearts the same way that you have taught me. As well as a radio station, there is, of course, a medical center, which is currently under reconstruction. But at the medical center, they report this. One of the programs is the vaccination program. And in Haiti, one in 15 children will die before they reach their fifth birthday. Just let that sink in. That's at least one child in your children's kindergarten class. One in five. We are proud to be doing our work to improve that statistic. The staff there reports through vaccinations and pediatric consultation. And every Thursday, we have 100 plus babies coming to get their vaccines. So you see, even when we don't feel that God is working, let's remember that he never stops working. There is nothing our God cannot do. I love that song entitled Waymaker that reminds us that our God is a waymaker, that our God is a miracle worker, that our God is a promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that's who you are. So when we look around, we may see sadness, we may see hopelessness, but the psalmist saw goodness and the psalmist saw hope. The world around may appear to be out of control. Indeed, your very world may appear to be in pieces today. The way ahead for you may seem Totally impossible. But let us remember, there is real hope when our hope is in the Lord.
Jesus, speaking to his disciples in Mark chapter 10, responds to their question, who then can be saved? Jesus replies lovingly, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things, all things are possible with God. So then how do we respond to this great truth? Well, we need to acknowledge the Lord. We need to focus again on our great God and all that he has already done. The psalmist says, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Let us worship our great God because our hope is in the Lord. Why? Because there's nothing, absolutely nothing our God cannot do. Secondly, there is absolutely nothing our God does not know about us. Now that, on one hand, is extremely comforting. He knows all our needs. He knows all our difficulties, aware of everything that's going on. But he also sees us when we sin. He also knows when we are far from him. He also knows when we need to repent. We've seen in the first point that our God is omnipotent, all-powerful. Here we see that God is omniscient, all-knowing. There's nothing our God does not know. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 11, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable are his ways. You see, friends, our God must never be questioned. Our God must never be doubted. There, there is no answer he does not already have. He knows exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and for whom to do it. In verses 10 to 12 of Psalm 33, here we read of a stark contrast between what God can do and what, and what man can do. God's wisdom and indeed man's limitations. There's a huge gap here. But God is, our God is sovereign over all and in control of every life, and that includes yours, and of every nation around the world. The Lord's plans will stand up to testing. God's plans stand firm. In verse 11, we read, The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. You see, God's purposes are eternal and cannot nor will not be undone. And we need to remember that today. Nowhere is this more clearly seen than at the place called Calvary. You see, men there sought to destroy God's Son. They falsely accused him. They beat him. They nailed him to a cross. They placed him in a tomb and thought, that's it. We've got rid of him. But God raised his son Jesus from the dead. We've been singing about this. And you see, this was God's plan all along. And against all odds, Jesus is now the giver of life, eternal life to all who will believe. The psalmist in verse 12 puts it like this, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. When a nation turns to God, there is blessing. But when a nation turns its back on God, they forfeit such a blessing. And so do you and I. OMS seeks to share these great truths with nations all around the world. Let's go back on our travels again, and this time to Russia where we see God's goodness in the city of Moscow, where 700 students are uh, in training almost every year. Let me introduce you to Sasha Sutsarov, an ex-KGB agent. Sasha is now the current uh, director of the Moscow Seminary, and we thank God for him, the staff, and all that has been done there to prepare men, uh, especially to preach God's word into countries and different aspects and areas of Russia. We also have OMS missionaries reaching out in the much smaller area of Sicily, 15 miles south of Catania near the city garbage dump. Every 50 yards or so on this road, a prostitute from Africa tries to sell herself to truck drivers passing by. OMS missionaries showing God's love are offering help and hope in this sad and indeed shocking situation. We'll travel on with me to the great country of Indonesia. And recent news from one of our OMS co-workers there says this, in this pandemic era, praise the Lord, our friends remain strong and sharing the good news. Every Friday we meet on Zoom to share testimonies, strengthen and pray for each other. Just recently, three people came to faith 
from the majority religion here. Three from an animistic background. And one of these has donated land for a church building. The funds given for one new fellowship have been used to start three churches. And new workers are being trained every day. This is Far East. Let's come back to far west of our globe, uh, to the country of Mexico. And I know that uh, you as a church have been supporting Brendan Leslie Reed there, and indeed other missionaries that have been here to the church. And let me pause and just say thank you to you as a church for your interest and for your very generous practical support and continuing prayer support for all of our missionaries. But Leslie reported recently uh, that there had been over 170,000 deaths. Yet in the midst of the new normality and the sad news we constantly receive, he says, we have the hope of the gospel to proclaim to Mexican people. We can see how God is working in the lives of our contacts. Some of them are now having deep thoughts and questions about the meaning of life. Others are finding hope in studying the Bible and others are growing in their faith and we want to share the hope that they have found with people that know and are experiencing great suffering. Even during this COVID pandemic, when the world appeared to be spiraling out of control, or even if your life has been messed up and your world appears to be in pieces, and for many there seems to be no hope, God knows every detail. God cares about every detail. God has a plan. He's had a plan all along. Don't be afraid of it. Allow God to help you build your life on his wisdom and not yours. God is always right. He, he knows what he's doing. His ways are perfect. And God is never, ever wrong. Are we willing to trust him? Can I ask you a very personal question? Is your hope in the Lord this morning, whether you're here in the church building or watching in the hall at the back or maybe even watching online, is your hope in God this morning? Let's never forget that of all we have is Jesus. We will see that Jesus is all we need, whether in life or in death. Christ alone is enough. And we were singing that earlier, weren't we? In Christ alone, our hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. Oh, what heights of love. What depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease. And what will keep us to the end is his great love. Oh, he is our comforter. All in all, here in the love of Christ, we stand. How do we respond to this great truth? Well, we need to submit to the Lord. Verse 11 reminds us, but the Lord's plans stand firm. His intentions can never be shaken. Let's submit to his will for each of our lives. Our hope is in him because there's nothing our God does not know. And may God help us to do that each day. Thirdly, and finally, as we think about God's word this morning, there is nowhere our God cannot be with us. There is hope against all odds when our hope is in the Lord, because there's nothing God cannot do. There is nothing God does not know about us. And thirdly, there is nowhere where God cannot be with us. That's comforting. That's reassuring. When you face trials, when you face difficulties, when maybe suffering is beyond what you can put up with, God is right there with us. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's right there beside you and me in each of our difficulties. Verse 13 and 14 of this great psalm says, The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne he observes all who live on the earth. We understand in these words that there is therefore nothing hidden from our God. From his throne, his position of authority, God sees everything. He observes all that is happening, seeing and understanding human weaknesses and limitations, their difficulties and disappointments, all your frustrations and all your fears. You see, God's eye scans the entire world. He sees every nation but he also sees every person. To this I hold, says the songwriter, my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley. He will lead. He is the one who protects and sustains us each day. You see, our God is never, ever in lockdown. 
But let us also remember, sometimes God has to strip away those things that come between us and him. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth? This is what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. For we do not want you to be unaware, brothers, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on the God who raises the dead. Hudson Taylor, a great missionary for over 50 years to China in, in the 1800s, wrote on one occasion, you have proved the sufficiency of God only when you have trusted him for the impossible. Supporting the work of God on a practical and indeed a human level can almost be impossible in times of difficulty, and especially in this current pandemic of now almost two years. Missionaries and gospel ministries need financial support. And yet, we have witnessed God's faithfulness in and to our charity shop ministry. Up until recently, we had three shops, one in Cookstown and one in Port de Nôn and one also in Straban. And just two months ago, we opened our latest shop in the city of Lisbon. I want you to pray for this ministry. I want you to pray for our volunteers. In fact, maybe you could become one of those volunteers. We are in desperate need of help. But what a blessing. I thank God for all our volunteers who serve so sacrificially and all those who donate to our charity shop ministry so generously. And why is this ministry so important? Let me give you three reasons why. Because it provides much needed funds for the mission field. And without that, many of our ministries and, miss and missionaries could not function. But it also provides local opportunities to serve in mission. You might be saying, well, I could never go to a faraway country. I have family commitments. I've got work, etc." But maybe you could volunteer and become involved in this way, in mission and serve God. But one of the most exciting aspects of our charity shop ministry is the fact that they reach out into local communities with the gospel. Many who come into our shops are in great need. Now, not just of, of, of material and physical things, but very often there will be conversations and they will share I've walked in on a number of occasions and our staff have been praying with customers and helping customers. Last Christmas, one of them said, that's a lady who came in in tears and has gone out rejoicing. I said, why? Hey, what's, what's the difference? She said, well, she had nothing to give her children for Christmas. And she's now gone away with a carload to share with them. Just last year, I visited one of the projects that the Charity Shop Ministry supports in the uh, great country of Colombia. And there are two ministries there helping to reach the vulnerable, poverty-stricken, abandoned, and abused children in the capital city of Bogota. It was humbling, hugely challenging to meet these children now living uh, in Hope Houses 1 and Hope House uh, 2. And my, these children are finding hope for many just in the nick of time. As I was leaving, the children presented me with a very special book that it's almost, it's next to my Bible. I keep it and I treasure it. And it's a little book entitled, My Dreams. Let me share some of their dreams with you. There is Anthony. He wants to be a footballer. There is little Floor and she wants to be a doctor. Aaron, he hopes to have his own house one day. And little Sophia wants to be a chef. God is at work in Colombia. God is at work in Mexico. God is at work in Mozambique, in Ireland, Indonesia. In fact, in over 70 different countries around the world with OMS. Verse 18 tells us, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. So many seemingly hopeless situations, ruined lives in desperate conditions, sin having left, left its deadly scar. But God is right there reaching out in love, longing to bring hope. But he is also right there with you just now in your difficulty, in your struggles, in your trials, and promises to hear your cry for help. With our God, there's no social distancing, no keeping a meter, two meters apart. The Bible is a great message of hope. And this message is clear. There is no confusion. We need to believe this message 
And we need to share this message with others. So how should we respond? See, we must remember that God demonstrated his love toward us in sending his only son to die for you and for me and for those still outside of Christ, family, friends, workers with you. Jesus came and died so that we could be called the children of God. I love how John puts it. Behold, what manner of love the Father should show us that we should be called the children of God. And that's exactly what we are. So how do we apply this into our lives? Well, I believe we should trust in the Lord. Well, that sounds simple, doesn't it? We acknowledge him and we submit to him. And here, thirdly, we need to trust in the Lord, rely on his unfailing love. The psalmist says this in verse 19, he alone can rescue from death and is able to keep alive in times of need. In all the storms of life, he's Lord of all and he's your only hope in every difficulty. He's right here with us. He sees, he understands, and he cares. Our hope is in God because there is nowhere our God cannot be. And as we close this morning, we come to the end of this incredible psalm. The first few verses were a call to worship. And the psalmist ends with a, a call to wait, or some translation puts it like this, a call to trust in him. You see, we live in a world without hope, a life without God. Because of sin, we live without hope in a hopeless world. Is there an answer? Have we a message of hope? Do we believe it? Are we sharing it with others? God has called all of us as believers to the work of making disciples as we put our hope in him. We see a call to worship, to thank God for all that he is doing. A call to wait, to trust, because our soul waits for the Lord. And so the psalmist concludes with reminding us that our hope is in the Lord as we depend on him each day. We're not going to be shaken because our God is God. He is our help and he is our shield in times of need. We can count on his protection. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. So we can depend on the Lord. We can trust in God. We can count on his presence, his unfailing love, but we must serve him. That is not just a responsibility, but that is a great privilege for you and me if we take his name. And how do we do that? Well, our, we can do that in three ways. As we pray for his mission to reach those who don't yet know him. We can serve him through our going, engaging the one to reach the many. Who's that person that's waiting to hear from you about God's love? And of course, through our giving, there's never been a better time to give to God's mission. And so this morning, as we have thought about hope against all odds, that, that complete 100% confidence in Jesus, our living hope, death, failure, betrayal, sickness, disappointment, they cannot take your hope. Why? Because they cannot take your Jesus. Impossible. So as we hope against all odds and our God who never fails us because there is nothing our God cannot do for us. There is nothing our God does not know about us. There is nowhere our God cannot be with us. Be with us. And we thank God that there is hope against all odds. Because why? Because our hope is in God who never, ever fails. He has not failed OMS. He has never failed me since trusting him at the age of 16. And I can assure you, he will never, ever fail you. Amen. We pray God will bless uh, his word and these um, words too concerning the work of OMS around the world. We're going to stand to sing again, what gift of grace is my redeemer. And if you and I believe the words of this song, they will, not only will we sing it out with all of our heart, but we'll believe it each day as we seek to live uh, for him. What gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer? What gift of grace 
this is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains that are released, I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus. For he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me. Until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. And you that there are some um, little leaflets available in a plastic bag, both at the front and to the side doors here. Please take those with you uh, and uh, continue to pray for us. We appreciate all of that. May God bless you and help you to enjoy the rest of this day. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Father, hear our prayer. Bless us and make us a blessing to each one, because we ask it in Jesus' name, the only living hope, now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to let Trevor go to the front doors here and I'll go to one of these side doors. If you want to speak to Trevor after or ask him about the work of OMS, feel free to do that. He'll be about for a moment or two down there after the service. Thank you.